climate change is very much upon us. Is, does there not a sense of doom that comes with that and that it just becomes fatalistic? And then, and then what happens to the arguments about steering between those two, those two cases if you're just, yes, climate change exists, but we can't do anything about it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think if, I, if people get one thing out of that part of the book, it's understanding that climate change isn't a curve that's like this, where, okay, we're there now and this is now where this is our world. It's a curve that does this. And so every ton of emissions matters, and it matters more the further down that road we are. So it's not that, okay, we've already, you know, we've already blown it. Um, we're not going to meet 1.5 degrees C. We're done. It's 2 degrees C is monumentally worse than 1.5, and, and 2.1 is monumentally worse than 2. And, you know, so you mentioned the fire, the fire, um, the fires this summer. I mean, that was a, a world-changing experience, or a life-changing experience for a lot of people in Canada for very personal reasons. But, I mean, even in Edmonton, we, you know, we live in, right in downtown Edmonton, but we're by a forested ravine. And there was one day where it's like, everything is on fire. The sides of the highways were on fire. Um, it just seemed like there was three or four fires at rush hour every day from somebody throwing out a cigarette butt or from an ATV or something. And in our, like, right in the middle of Edmonton, I can walk to downtown Edmonton in 15 minutes, and we were making a fire plan. Now, was that an overreaction? Perhaps. But, you know, we're two blocks from a ravine. We've got, you know, some potential that we'd get hit by it. And you go a little bit out of the city, and it was, you know, it was full-on, you know, panic, not too far from the center of the city. So it really brought it home to a lot of people. Music